um, the meeting, open the meeting. Um, so the first order of business, oh, let, let, are there any, are there any items on the agenda that we need to add to um, in terms of uh, tonight's agenda? I know there was one, I think you may know of it, Holly, was a letter from uh, Erica. From er Erica J uh, Boyd Jacob. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would like to just tag that on the end so we can talk about it. Right, yeah, I have been online. Uh, anything else? I did talk to uh, Gary Berghoff at BBC. Can you hear me? Yep. Oh, okay. I did talk to Gary Berghoff at BBC after I saw you today, uh, Peter. When we get to our part on the agenda, uh, the Founders Day, if we if we talk about it, I'd like to talk at that point about what we said to him, what I said to him. Okay. The Founders oh, Day under the history. Yeah. Group. Okay. Okay. All right, then uh, we'll move forward then. It's uh, 6.36 and uh, the first item on the agenda is to approve last uh, meeting's minutes. Um, anybody wanna make a motion? Yeah, Holly. Um, I had two small corrections. Okay. Um, the people who have the tent available are Sunderland, not Waitley. Okay. So under the parade working group, you had um, mentioned Waitley. And okay. then under that same section, you said something to the effect of the um, task calendar that we developed was going to be on an application on the web page. It's for the parade work group and not on the web page. Yeah, yeah, oh, sorry, you're, you're going to put, you're going to have your sep a separate scheduling thing on an app for for your it's, group. it's not really a schedule it's just keeping us it's like a task thing okay it's but an excel just for the just for the parade committee correct so you can just say that we developed a task calendar but not that it's an app and not that it's going to be on the web okay great that's all i had just those couple tiny things it's your way to your way to communicate with each other, just to okay. keep us on check. Yeah, yeah. Good. Um, all right. I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes with these changes. So moved. <coughs> I second. All those in favor? Hi, Diane. Hi, Pete Thomas. Hi, Kelly. Dress. Hi, Holly. All right, the next item on here is access to Deerfield 350th email. I think that's to you, Jen. That was Alex, Alex was gonna reach out to Jen. Oh. You were gonna reach out to Jen because she was the only one in control of the email? Um, yeah, so I, oh, I guess I, um, so I talked to Jen. Uh, Jennifer, um, and I sort of had the impression that she was going to contact you guys, but I guess not. Um, so I don't know if it's something that one of y'all can like send her an email and just say, "Hey, is it possible for us to get access to that?" And unless that's already happened a while ago, oh. several times, several. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Well. Um, I will, I should see her tomorrow, I hope. Um, I'll, I'll go talk to her again, um, and I'll get back to you. Thank you, Alex. Yep. Hey, Alex, if, if that doesn't seem to work, let me know and I'll see if I can prompt her with an email. Okay. I think we've both got about the same amount of clout as far as this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, well, my biggest worry is, you know, we keep looking for help. We keep 
um, trying to promote. And if people are communicating yeah. and very likely so through that vessel, um, I don't think anybody's looked at email for months uh, because it kind of got dropped. And so even though we have the password to get in, she has a second level of security on her cell phone and that is preventing any of us from getting in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll definitely, I'll, I will talk to her. Thanks, Alec. Well, we seem to be getting some emails. I mean, I've been getting transmittals coming in, so somehow they're filtering in, but uh, I agree with you. We, we need that access to that uh, email portal. But any emails you're getting, Peter, you're getting to your personal email, correct? Yeah, yeah. Not, no, not via Deerfield 350. No, it's like, you know, it's like the, the letter from um, Erica. You know, it came into my personal email. That wasn't how did it work? Well, Denise Schwartz, From who's Denise, on the parade yeah. work group, sent it to yeah. you and I. Yeah. Knowing you were on the history part of it, but um, yeah. Yeah. anyway. You know, I mean, the, I I don't mind that either. But I mean, I think you're absolutely right. When I mean, if people are going to communicate on a regular basis, and that's the that's really the way to track what we're doing too, in terms of that emails. I mean, it goes in that received file or sent file and, and uh, uh, we know whether we've responded to it or not, so. Right. Okay. Um, well, we're next up is the parade working group. Um, I don't have a lot to offer. Um, we met again on, um, August uh, 8th, and we're meeting tomorrow. Um, so we had um, some good discussion. Um, our biggest issue is lack of volunteers. Um, I think maybe we had five people at that meeting, mm -hmm. maybe four. Yeah. Um, so I've heard from a few people that they'll help when things get really close to the date of the parade, but we really need some boots on the ground to help with a lot of tasks right now. Um, I'm happy to report after nearly seven months of waiting for help on the parade documents that we do have final versions from the town hall. Um, so we can at least start the solicitation process with finalized documents. Um, so well, you you went on my screen. You went blank for for a second there. I couldn't. What you just said, I couldn't hear. Okay, um, I said after nearly seven months of um, trying to get things finalized, um, we do finally have the parade documents in a final version. The ones that had the legal mumbo jumbo that we had to make sure were complying with. Um, our legal um, staff for the town. And so we finally have those. Um, we'll be discussing um, more relation to those documents and other things tomorrow night. And we would have more update after tomorrow. Kelly, I don't know if you wanna share anything else. No, I think the biggest thing is we just need help. We need more members. Would it help putting something out on uh, Deerfield now. I've been doing that. You've been doing that, yeah. Yeah, Kelly's been great when we have meetings. She posts it on Deerfield now and on the um, the web page, or excuse me, the Facebook page for yeah. the 350. Um, but I think it may be time for I don't know either something on FCAT that's gonna show often and or the select board, maybe we need to get something in the newspaper. Uh, I think it would not be prudent for us to just throw something in the newspaper about the parade looking for help because we're gonna be looking for help in many ways. 
So I think maybe having a collective from the top kind of request for volunteers um, would be great. Is there, um, is there something that rather than just, in addition to just saying one volunteers, is there a way to give like four or five general types of things that, that you need help with? We things, have. Sometimes, sometimes it's easier for people if they say, oh, I could do that. Oh yeah, we have already. Oh, yeah, we've, we've, we've done some tasks that people could consider so it's it's just you know lack of people jumping on it and uh, I worry about this because I guess a smaller collection of people can put this all together but if we don't have people available for the gearing up in the day of executing yeah you need to have, you need a lot of people you, yeah. you're going to be thirty yeah. to forty Holly, people when when you post um, get blue get more specific. We need people for this particular crew, whatever. Um, I, I do look at the Deerfield now, I'm on it. And um, I actually don't remember other than a quick little blurb. If I can, I'll try to comment when I see it and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, say yeah, I mean, people for the parking group, we need people to whatever, paint the road, who, who knows, whatever it is. But uh, maybe be a little bit more specific so people will respond. I mean, even when I joined the group, I sort of didn't quite know what I wanted to do when I first got here. Sometimes you sort of know, you have to know what your niche is. So maybe writing specific jobs might help people, like Peter said, say, yeah, I can do that. I can do yeah, that. Yeah, we, we've done that. I've done that on Facebook a couple of times now. Um, I'm just keeping them simple at this point because there's yeah. just so many posts. Yeah. We can certainly do it once we tweak it a oh, little bit more. Okay. I, yeah. You can do as many posts as you want. I know, but <laughs> it also becomes white noise and people tend to tune it out after a while. You're going to be somewhat yeah. strategic. Hey, Alex, there's, um, I, I was tuned in the other night to the town, to FCAT. And one of the things that's up there is, is the advertising bulletin board. Maybe the thing to save a little bit of effort on, on your part is since that's revolving, if you do it once, they keep replaying, they keep playing it. Maybe that's a, a way or a, a venue that we can use um, to Advert you know, advertising to advertise the, bulletin? The, hmm? the bulletin board, like in the um front foyer when you first walk into the building or something no, else this was, this was on the tv i mean on it was broadcast it was all these things that were going on in deerfield they, they uh, do the music with the, the bulletins flashing for different uh, towns that, that part yeah and they played um, the music uh yeah that would I didn't realize that that existed. Um, that's great. <laughs> um, I, I I haven't seen. Never had to memorize it. <laughs> um, I haven't seen Jonathan. Um, but uh, we can definitely ask him. I think that's a great idea. Um, yeah, that might help getting. I mean, who go? Not everybody goes on Facebook, so different true. venues, uh, short of the newspaper, might help might help at all. I agree. Yeah. But but I still think that rather than like subgroup by subgroup putting out information that we need to kind of get the word out of the various kinds of things. And that may be too it may be too much info to put on a quick little flash of a screen. Um because I think you know you're trying to read that before the screen clicks over to the next thing they're posting. Um, so, um, hi, Carolyn. Hi, I apologize for being late. I ripped up from the town hall as fast as I could. No worries. <laughs> um, we're talking essentially about the lack of stepping up and how we might better get the word out. And, um, you know, for the parade group, you know, for Kelly and I, we've been trying to get information out. She's been great with posting on our Facebook page and Deerfield Now uh, for our meetings. We actually did some of the tasks that would be involved with the parade. 
But I do feel that this is kind of symptomatic of what we're gonna be walking into next year and having some kind of collective announcement of next year and the ver a few key things that maybe we need some help with. And I almost think maybe newspaper article, something that comes from the town that goes to everyone. I just feel we need to do it in a different way than we are because we're, we, I mean, we're seeing four or five people at parade meetings and four or five people are not going to put a parade together. I know. Uh, what we have to do is we have to connect with groups. So um, one of my suggestions would be the PTO because you want the school kids to be involved and, you know. Uh, well, I'm on the PTA and I've, I've spoken to them about it. Okay. So what you want to do is have a PTO committee that's 350th that will work with the parade committee but, so but, but i do feel that we're going to need volunteers for lots of things so are each little individual widget going to have to work out with all these groups um i just well, what i have found over the years uh you know 42 years of volunteering in town is that you don't have general volunteers anymore, okay? People don't volunteer just, I mean, me, I'm on multiple, multiple things. You just don't have that happening. You have people that will do specific commitments and they have to be defined because people feel overstressed, you know, especially younger people, you know, they have, you know, they have to work and they got kids and everything else. So. Um, what I what we have to do is you have to pull in groups that will commit to your activity. And I, I think that's the only way we're gonna do it. Well, you know, I, I like, reached out. We have the Lions Club, we have the Lit Women's Club, we have the PTO or PTA. Um, we, we're gonna have to just identify groups that will provide the volunteers for specific jobs. And we're gonna to have to identify the jobs. Um, like you need, say you need like six people to manage parking. You're gonna to have to go to the um, Women's Club or the Lions Club, Lions Club for, for example, and say, I need six people. Can you find me six people? And this is no different than, you know, Holly, the EDS. I specifically call people and say, I need you for this day. Like I called you and say, I need you. Right. You're, you're a general, you are not on every single uh, clinic that I've run. And, and I, I, but I have to specifically call, you are, you are one of my volunteers. So I call you and I say, will you show up at this time slot? And that's what we're gonna have to do. Cause that's the only way you can manage volunteers in this day and age. Cause everybody is busy. Yeah, I, I don't totally agree with you because I don't feel there's been an announcement per se. You know, I, 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 I'm open to any way that we can get a, an article written anything holly i'm open to anything I, I you know i try to bring it up at selectmen's meetings um I, I, when i'm out anywhere i encourage people to volunteer for our activities when, when is the um fall town meeting october 24th um could we do if we all collectively work together could we do a handout Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And that will be I, a big one. That should be a big one because the library will be on that ballot. I mean, uh, on that vote. So there should be a fairly good turnout at the town meeting. Okay. Um, Kelly, would you work with me so we could try to draft something and then we'll work with any other subgroups so we can mm -hmm. get information out there? Yeah. Um, I, I personally don't have time to call a lot of people. And I used my women's club network and of the women's club members that first said yes, which was, I think maybe eight, eight of us, four have said they, they don't feel it's a fit for them. So, you know, I, you can't just go to a group and expect they're gonna be the be all end all answer. Um, 
because we need people that will show up, can help coordinate, and they don't have to come to every meeting, but just come and tell us what their preferences are. And because we haven't even had that, I'm just nervous to start this whole financial exposure to the town, starting to book things when, if we don't have enough people to be there to help, I don't know how we're gonna pull this off. Yeah. This is a little subterfuge, but what one of the things that happened, Carolyn, when I came to the select board meetings and talked about the oral history program is that people approach me outside saying, oh, I saw you on, you know, on the TV the other night and, and uh, you know, what you were doing, I think that's a good idea, you know, and they're, they're, they're supportive. And I'm wondering, Holly, we'll put, put a little 30 second presentation together about the parade and its importance and go and give it to the select board, do it at one of their meetings. You'll be then on the broadcast of the select board and that they play over multiple times during the week, but it also brings the authority of the select board to that request. I, I think doing updates on a regular basis between now and, when, and, and 2023 is really important only because people haven't, they're kind of hearing stuff, but they don't really hear stuff. So this is, you know, it's just one more venue. Um, surprisingly, a lot of people look at the selectmen's meeting. So I, I agree with Peter on that, 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 you know, a little bit more discussion about, you know, what we're going to do um, for the parade and the fireworks would be really great. Well, the fireworks is being handled by Friends of Deerfield, right? I think so, yeah. Okay. But it's going to be the same weekend as the parade. Right. But I just, I'm, I don't want to speak for other people. Oh, no, um, no, no, no. You would just be doing your stuff, Holly. Okay. Well, we're, we're having a meeting again tomorrow. And uh, hopefully we'll have some people show up. And we'll, I guess Kelly and I will talk offline, take it from there. I, I think key, though, is to, just to pull in some of the younger people, too. By that, you mean who? Well, just, you know, the, like, Kelly's PTO group. Yeah, like, I've tried. Nobody's interested. Mm. They, they got too much going on. Is yeah. there a way to go through the high school once they get back in session? Would there be some group at the high school that would be interested in this? Well, I don't think we can have students in positions of responsibility. That just concerns well, me. Depends on what kind of task you have. I mean, maybe well, the day I, of the parade, yeah. I mean, day of, That's they fun. can be with other people, but, you know, ahead of time, there's a number of things that have to get done. All right, we'll see how tomorrow goes. All right. Um, Holly, why don't you call me after you, tomorrow and then we'll we'll decide which agenda do you want to be on in the select board's next meetings, okay? Okay, we'll do that. Um, and Carolyn, because you popped on um, late and missed it, um, we still don't have access to the Deerfield 350 email. Um, Alex said he talked to Jennifer and Jennifer said she'd reach out to somebody and she hadn't again, so. Okay, let me just... We really need some help in getting that resolved. Oh yeah, okay. Let me uh, write down a note. I just have to get my book out. So that's the 350th official town email, right? That is the one right attached to the 350 right. um, webpage and Facebook. We just haven't looked at that for a long time and maybe we have volunteers out there, but we don't know. And maybe they don't want to volunteer because we haven't got back to them. <laughs> oh, how awful. Yeah. All right. Let me, um, I'll call, I'll call Jennifer tomorrow and get on it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, the next one is the working history group update. Um, 
I've been in, <laughs> I've been flat out on, on stuff. But uh, one of the things that um, we've been working, I was doing um, because of the oral history program. I wanted to know more about the immigrant populations that had come into Deerfield. Mm -hmm. So I spent a couple of weeks going through the basic statistics, the census data and pound data and, and everything else and kind of pulled a summary together, which I've, which I've done. Um, and I was also asked if I would submit a, a, an article to Historic Deerfield, the journal that comes out once a year. Um, on a topic, and I said, "Well, what about the immigrant populations in Deerfield? We have, we have, you've never done that." And they said, "Fine." So I showed them that the, what I had worked up in terms of research, and they said, "Oh, that looks fine." But I said, "What I really want to do is combine that with some real life experience." So, okay, Diane, take it away. <laughs> yeah, we're playing this as well. well, I've been do, I've been talking about the Polish community, and every time Peter would reference something, I would say I would chime in of the old Polish family's name, and I uh, we I sort of was trying to keep up with him, with him being the uh, uh, the earliest history, and me knowing at least the last fifty or sixty years, and uh, I thought he was gonna write the article about my family, but he said, let's do it first person. And um, I've been doing a lot of history and, and put looking at different documents, sort of trying to get birth dates and connecting the lines. Uh, short story is um, I have done a story on my grandfather coming to South Deerfield. His sisters were here. Uh, we've got cousins all over the place. Uncle Bill had a store. Uncle Leo had a store. Um, cousin Frankie ran the bar. Uh, there were Polish people all over the street, you know, having businesses. So I just gave my perspective. And, and as I told him, I, it felt like a term paper. I hope I at least get a B plus, if not more, <laughs> if not better. And, uh, you know, so as, you know, I think when I read the, I read the magazine, he let me read it the last year's issue and very cheekily I said geez it'd be really cool to write something for them having never written anything other than letters to the editor in high school and stuff like that but uh yeah we'll see we'll see how open it mouth goes through. Foot, huh? Pardon? <laughs> open mouth and insert foot yeah yeah no, I, I I think it's it's great I mean we and, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm counting on with this oral history program is that it's these varied stories as Diane said to me today well I'm just putting a little I'm putting I'm putting some meat on the bones was what I he froze so I interjected <laughs> but it's not patterns some of those patterns are pretty eye-opening <laughs> uh, but when you can add real live dead people you know I mean it's a lot of the people that Diane's talking about right now have passed but you know, it's real people. These were their lives. It's not just raw data. And I think combining that with the, the raw data in a single article allows us to move forward in a type of history that doesn't often exist or often get done. And I see the oral history program as being the way to bring that about in a much more extensive manner. And also to be able to data bank those stories in permanently curation. So a researcher 50 years from now can go in and look at those and see what people, how people's account uh, of that particular period was. It's, it's all too easy for, particularly if, if it's something novel, the first, this is in academia, the first person to write that book all sort of sets the pattern. And then a lot of work coming after it follows the same pattern. So you kind of get the same story. And you don't normally get people to look at the primary data and say, well, this doesn't fit here. And what we come up with for Deerfield is not necessarily going to fit Hadley or Hatfield. And it certainly won't fit any of the urban towns. 
which primarily attracted people because of the mills. Yeah. Um, you know, Deerfields attracts it because of the agriculture. And so we, we've got a, a variety of stories that can be told, but told in terms of real people and real places. I mean, you know, Diane presents, you know, we lived on West Waitley Road or, you know, the extension of Elm Street. You know, people can, can relate to that. Lived down the edge of the swamp. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, but, you know, so anyway, I, I just wanted to let you know that that was in the works and, and uh, I, I, I think it'll be a nice contribution and, and get people, this should come out for Christmas. So this, this journal, so if it, if it does, make, it might make a good Christmas present for people to, but to extend our interest in immigrant groups um, I think that's one, you know, one way to, to have done it. Um, really great. I'm excited about that. I would love to read it, Diane. I'm really looking forward to it. I had fun writing it. It was actually, I was reading documents I've stored harder, you know, and picking out the minutia and also remembering things yeah, it, it, it became a fun thing for myself. I uh, I have to admit, I enjoyed doing it. It's a kind of trip down memory lane, you know? Oh, just, uh, please. I was uh, having good dreams every night while I was trying to think of the next sentence. <laughs> <laughs> so the oral history program is moving along. Uh, we've got one set of equipment and the, the clients have their own. So we've got enough equipment to begin with. Um, the clients have completed uh, uh, three training courses for a team of nine people. Uh, Alex is going to be one of them to do interviews. Oh, good. So we're um, he and his, he and his mom will be one one of the teams. Um, I just got a letter today from someone who has been. Uh, doing a lot of interviews through GCC, and she wanted to come in as a contributor, as an interviewer as well. So if, I think <clears throat> the more we get into this, the more it's known, we may get more volunteers coming in to, uh, um, you know, help out. Um, we've done four interviews already, and... Um, We're, we're sort of in a little low right now. People are going on vacation. We got a couple of issues that we need to resolve before we uh, do that. But uh, I think we're ready to go. And I've talked to other people and here's something, I don't know how to deal with it at the moment, but I've talked to several people who have told me <clears throat> that FCAT back nine, 10 years ago did oral recordings of people and broadcast them on FCAT. They did. they did. So if we can find, see if they have the tapes. And we know that um, uh, PVMA just got a set of nine tapes um, digitized that they had done back in the 90s. And as it turned out, uh, Michael Klein, who at that point was part of the um, folklore um, project in, in the Pioneer Valley was also doing uh, interviews in the 90s, and he's just come up with 72 tapes from the 90s. Uh, oh. They're not all focused on Deerfield, but several of them are. So oh. if, we, if we can get a hold of the old ones and now bring in people um, that can carry on the continuity of those discussions that went on 30 years ago, as well as what they remember further on back, um, we're looking at a nice set of data, uh, I think, to be able to turn back into the 350 uh, events, either through talks or through oral podcasts themselves. Um, PVMA has a web page that will do oral broadcasts. So I think we're, while we haven't worked out any of the, any of the details, the opportunity is there. And uh, People to date have been very willing to, you know, sit down and talk. We actually did Tim Newman, uh, who is the director for PVMA. Um, 
and I was the logger and I was writing like crazy for an hour and 42 minutes. So he didn't have any dearth of stuff to say. <laughs> to say. It, it, was, it was going. Um, so I think that's, that's, I think that's working well. Um, I guess, I guess, oh, what we, Diane, you wanted to, to discuss something too. Um, um, okay, we had discussed how I'm trying to do something built around Founders Day. Um, I'm thinking like, well, Founders Day is what, May 7th, I believe, on a Sunday. I'd like to do something on a Saturday. Uh, Holly, you had mentioned the tent. Is this an available tent and, and will it be available in May, including June? Or is it only going up for like a week or so? Do you have any um, idea? The, the tent that's available is through the Sunderland Fire Department. And let me go back to my notes. Um, I don't have all my parade group okay. notes. Um, in any case, I think there's a fee, but they come and set it up and then they take it down. Uh, um, what, is it, well, uh, would we be able to have it for a beer tent? I was at beer, uh, BBC talking to Gary today. Um, he seems to be well in command of how to make fundraisers work. He, he had more ideas than I did other than the mug idea, um, the theme for the mug. Um, he said it'd be easier if we had a tent, such as a beer tent. Uh, then for you, Holly, where did you want to have this tent placed? Grammar school, uh, senior center, or Leary Law? I'm not sure why you're asking me where we want a tent. Because you mentioned a tent. I, I said there's a tent available for oh, our okay. events. So for any events we're having, if we need a tent, um, our next door neighbor, Sunderland Fire, has one, and they set it up and take it down. I don't know anything more about it, what oh, the okay. fees are. Um, um, so, um, but you did mention the word fundraiser, and well, so so that would be Friends of Deerfield and not us. And we should see the if they do a tent, because we're looking for, well an idea for a beer tent. A uh, beer tent for something during the activities, maybe when the history, uh, the bell ringing is going on. I, I've never done any of that organizing, any of it before, but that would be a good time to be selling the beer, the beer mugs or whatever. And oh, by the way, I, I have two beer mugs, which I actually brought over to Gary's and we looked at them and this is the 300th theme, which is what Freedom's Frontier or something like that. Um, and discussed what we'd like to have on the mugs. I'm gonna move away from the tent for a moment and uh, I'll, I'll research that a little bit more, but is there any, do we have a theme? Do we have a theme? Do we have a logo? Is there anything that we would like to see on the mugs? if they're printed in commemoration? Um, what I would suggest, Diane, is you reach out to the Friends of Deerfield. Um, and we okay. really should have them come on. We okay. need to invite Cause, them. Because it sounds like Gary's just gonna make these mugs himself and whatever, whatever monies, because I said Friends of Deerfield and he went, oh, no, 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 I'll, I'll take care of everything. And sounds like then, he will give his donation to the friends of Deerfield at that point. I don't know if he wanted them selling the mugs. It didn't make it, I'm not sure. It's well, a, we're still working I, this out. I think you really should reach out to the friends of Deerfield. And I think also that they need to start coming to our meetings from now on too. Okay, so, all righty. So um, do you have Chris um, Harris's contact information? Um, I must have it somewhere. And if I don't, I'll contact you. I, and I know, um, I, I'm pretty sure uh, Tim Hilchey is still on that committee too. Um, but anyway, somebody should be coming to our meetings here. 
Um, but you would want to coordinate with them, Diane, the whole okay. Okay. Uh, fundraising. You can't have alcohol on the elementary school uh, property, really. Um, is the ball field behind the police station in an elementary school? No, that's no, not. Yeah, okay. not the, when was when's the Leary lot going to be ready? Well, we're moving forward. That's at special town meeting. We're um, swapping the property with um, Hampshire Lumber, Lumber. So we'll have the um, access to Elm Street and then it's going to go okay. out to bid. So um, I'm not sure if it'll be done by May. Mm. I don't know. It's just, you know, things are slow. Mm. Uh, and it's ready. I mean, we're, I mean, we're moving forward. Is we have yeah. to declare a little strip of property surplus so that we can give it to them, and then they're going to give us the access to Elm Street, uh, so then we can do the parking lot. So hopefully, I mean, the intention was to get it all done, but for 2023. But I don't oh. know if it'll get done by May. It certainly will be done for our parade and fireworks, though. I'm sure. I think in terms of the tent, Diane, is that the, if, if using the tent for an event uh, I, during Founders Day, I, I think we need to determine, do we need a tent? Okay. And then the other part of it is, okay, is the, the Friends of Deerfield, do they want to conduct or hold a fundraiser event at the same location, independent of Founders Day? We okay. may need, we may decide that depending upon specifically what goes on that we need a tent to put on the program. And so that's independent of raising funds uh, or well, either it or will something the church else. Be ready? Hmm? The church, will the church be ready? Well, church that's another, I mean, that's another question that, that yeah. so people, uh, know or, or a part of that discussion. One, a couple of the things that Diane has, and I have talked about is using the Congregational Church as a venue for uh, Founders Day. Um, the, the, the larger part of the church is right down to simply pews right now. There's nothing religious left in that room. The organ's gone but it will hold more than a hundred people. So if we wanted to give a talk, if I gave a talk in there about the founding days of Deerfield and had a slide projector, but one of the events that, that has been meeting house for a long time is bell ringing during major events, uh, particularly during 4th of July's, but they also rang the bell um, for the 250th anniversary of the United States. Uh, they ran it for the marches at Selma. They ran it for uh, the uh, Vietnam War ending. And the whole upstairs of the belfry is just filled with graffiti of those people that have actually rung the bell. And we were thinking, well, wouldn't it be cool if we could get enough people together to ring that bell 350 times to celebrate the 350th anniversary? And I've talked to Rich Holmes, who is a member of the church in Old Deerfield, and he's willing to do the same thing. Good. So try and set that up. So it may be a combination of presentations, but I think with bell ringing, we could get, I mean, a five-year-old can pull that rope or do it with his parents. And I think it'd be a wonderful way to get more people involved in actually doing a physical something during the 350th and have a little book there that they can sign. I rang the bell on the 350th uh, and we could just put it in the archives. So that's what she and I have, have sort of been talking about. So the question was, do you have any notion in terms of the church, Carolyn, in terms of whether we could just use that space. Um, I don't think anything needs to happen except open the doors and. 
Well, <laughs> we're, we're renovating the space. We were supposed to, they were, DA was supposed to renovate the space in September and October, but um, <clears throat> Tom uh, that was going to oversee the project um, is having surgery. So it's been bumped to like November, December, but it still should be done because I think, you know, the money's there. DA was going to do some, you know, stuff, but um you know, to make it more usable space. But we had already appropriated money for like fixing the truss and, you know, what was the steeple. Uh, yeah. So that was supposed to all get done this fall. So uh, that's pushed probably a little bit into the winter, but that's the interior. So I think, I believe it will be done for 2023. And <clears throat> What I'll do is just bring up the fact that we would want the church available for 2023 events. And the thing with it, we don't, try we to don't get it done. The, yeah, we don't need the back part of it. It's just within the sanctuary. It's just a place so people can walk through the door, sit down, hear a talk, stage to ring the bell, and leave. And, the, and there's a handicap access that comes into the same room at the other end of the building so yeah I mean, we, we, we're that's a, that's a little bit of disrepair yeah, but. yeah we're gonna get that all fixed up and that yeah. was like i said in september and october it's now been pushed to like november december but mo it should get done peter it should be done well then you know maybe the maybe one if we need a tent for something else maybe one place to put it it is in the between the library and the church it's all town land. Yeah, the whole you space. Set it up in that yard. There's a little bit of parking there, but it would, you know, seat a small group of people. But I like the idea of being able to invite as many people as possible for the bell ringing. And, you know, people don't want to come in and inside and sit down. If we had a tent outside, they could. It's going to, it's going to take a while to pull that cord 350 times. But, um, I've what, done it, and what, it's a nice sounding bell. What, what, you were going to be doing this in May, right, for Founders Day? Yeah. Okay, I, I believe we will have a senior, the seniors have a tent that we have been paying for up. I think that goes up in May. It comes down in like October, end of October. Yeah. Um, you know, right next to the senior center. Yeah, so, over there, okay. Well, I, I, I mean, I think we can just pull this off. It, it's no, it, I don't think it's a huge deal, but it, yeah. as long as this, you know, as long as the sanctuary would be available, people can sit down. It's kind of a, it's a, it's a fun room. It's a nice room to be. Oh, Peter froze again. Be, uh, rambunctious. You can lift up the end of the seat, find out what that view to, to sit there. Because uh, the dollar amounts are on the ends of the pews. Um, all right, so we'll we'll just move forward we, we, with the assumption that uh, I will. I will try to get. Um, I'll meet with the building committee and um, Julie Chalfont chairs and and find out. Uh, try to nail down the timeline on the church. Yeah. Okay. And the thing that's nice with that in May is I don't think we'll have to worry about heat or anything. I mean, sanctuary during the daytime. It's going to be warm enough. People can sit there with a with their coats on if they need to, but it's inside, out of the wind, and it's late enough in the year, so I don't think it, we shouldn't be having freezing temperatures. Right. And hopefully no snow. Yeah. Um, going back to the mugs, are there any anything, do we have a theme? Do we have anything, like if, he, if Gary did the mugs, Oh, did you want a town theme, sixteen seventy three to twenty twenty three? We already did that. There is a town logo that we agreed would be put on all of the the uh, the two lines for the yep. is that okay? All right. But the friends of Deerfield got all that stuff. Should have all that stuff. Again. Okay. Yeah. They may already have. I, I'll have. A, he they haven't contacted him. Um, I think I'll yeah I'll get in touch with Chris and yeah. maybe just we can he can we can sort of get it all coordinated make yeah. it work 
I want to get excitement before the parade. <clears throat> That's the idea, you know, just keep people involved or keep people paying attention. Well, I think what we want to do is avoid crossing you know, organization in terms of money versus versus events. I, my next door neighbor uh, is on the board of, at uh, the Polish American Club. And he said that they had originally just uh, had been approached about donating a block of money. But then he started getting requests from several people about donating for this or donating for that. So they've kind of pulled back and they're waiting to see what happens. So if we can settle, let the dust settle and let the PVMA deal with the, with the money. Now, I, I think if we have a request, for example, if we needed a tent for Founders Day, the thing to do would be to go to uh, Friends of Deerfield and say, hey, look, uh, we just checked, uh, tent's gonna cost us $150. Can you put that in your roster of events uh, or, or expenses to, you know, to cover. All right, so. I will. Pres I'll pursue that somehow okay. to see what the, how they can accommodate. And uh, alrighty, thank you. Yeah. Um. Okay, so I think we're into new business. What do we got here on the docket? Ah, 350th additional funding needs. Whew, okay. <laughs> Anybody want to start? We have, I had wanted an idea, but I'm just going to put a placeholder in and then we can still, you know, we can decide by next month still. Um, you know, we'll have time for the warrant because because the meeting is on the 24th. So we'll have some time. Do um, we? So we know we've got at least we allocated 30 grand for the for the parade. Do you have a sense, Holly, of how much in addition to that? Assuming the Friends of Deerfield provided nothing, what what do you what's your ballpark figure for the parade? I I think it's too early. Um, I'm going to be connecting with Adam to see what the police budget would be. Because you know we have to factor all the widgets in if we do any printing, um, you know, for signage, um, all of that's got to come out of that figure. So I think it's a little premature to say where we're at right now. The um, the ten, the police budget uh, is built in some community activities. So you know your police detail should be absorbed by the you know the the regular town police budget already um but you so shouldn't have to worry about any expense coming out i don't think so because john builds in enough details for you know like the memorial parade and you know x number of funerals that require extra police coverage and okay that's good I mean, to know there's a little there's a little fluff in there every year I don't want to say fluff because there isn't, but for you know to handle det police details, you know to do the like parade safety and all that kind of stuff. Okay, um, you know if we have to obviously put um, porta potties out, you know there'll be an expense. Um, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head, um, but you know signage for sure. Um, we're going to have to have you know, some kind of signage that we put up. Um, postage. Postage. Um, I'm presuming anything we mail out through the town hall is going to be postage charged back to the parade. Yep. So, um, you know, there'll be, there'll be an element of that. Uh, but I... I Turn the gauge, yeah. I, I think we need, you know, a little more... Um, investigating and a few more meetings before we could have some of that starting to shape together. Okay. Well, have you, did you talk to the folks over in Waitley? I just wondered if they gave you a figure, you know, what did it cost to put there on? I, I don't think in terms of budgets, we need it all broken down. I'm just trying to think about 
if we're going to the town to ask more money, if they if we don't spend it, if if, if friends of Deerfield comes up with forty grand and we ask for forty grand, we'll take their money and the town won't have any cost. What I'm looking for is so that we don't lose the opportunity to get town funding. We we need to come up with some kind of a figure, even if it's insecure. And maybe one way to do it is just look at ask Waitley. Well, what what was your total cost for the parade? I mean, the, the, the uh, mummers were there and they had floats and- They, they didn't have the mummers. Well, some, there was some- They had the Shriners. There. Shriners, okay. okay. Um, I, I, can, I can ask them that question, but part of it is the way we're approaching it in our town versus how other towns did it. Um, you, know, I, you know, other towns got people to sponsor um, you know, bands coming in, but again, that's would be our work group soliciting and we're not supposed to solicit. So um, if somebody wants to do something, um, they either got to pay it direct or pay through Friends of Deerfield. So I know when we talked with Sunderland, um, they said, again, I'm trying to go back to my notes, but I think it was about 30,000. They had told us, um, and you know, it comes down to is that thirty thousand soup to nuts, all their expenses plus all the groups they hired, um, and if we're not hiring all the groups because they're going to be sponsored through Friends of Deerfield, again, this is where it's a little, the, the line's a little jagged. But I I can ask Waitley. I mean. I certainly can ask them. Well, you know, I, I mean, we're obviously not prepared to come up with a number tonight, but we're, we'll need to do that before this, or we'll just simply lose the opportunity entirely. I think, I'd, I'd I think we should just, just yeah. I, I, would, I would agree with you, Pete. I think we should just put a placeholder in. If we've been doing 10 a year, maybe we should just ask for 10. I'll just put a placeholder in and then we can adjust the amount um, yeah. before it gets posted. It just needs, yeah. before the, uh, the warrant gets printed, it needs, we need to have the amount. I just don't want to shortchange your request, that's all. Uh, that's right. I don't want to, I don't want to ask for 10 when we really need 25 or something like that. Because this, this money will be available after we vote it at town meeting, whereas yeah. We wait till annual town meeting. It's not available till July 1st. Right. So, so. But, but for this town meeting, it's immediately available? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because we're voting it from free cash. It's already been certified, you know. So. Okay. We don't have to wait for the next budget year. Yeah. Right. Uh, there's no one on from Friends of Deerfield tonight. Okay. We'll table that. Um, Peter, can you just have them come to our next meeting? Could you just send an email to Chris and just say, you know, is there any possibility you can come? We would just like an update or someone, you know, someone. I know his travel schedule is a little hard but i will do that thank you i i just feel like we need to have a little more conversation <laughs> we, i don't really know what's going on it was it was great when jennifer was coming but um you know we haven't heard anything since then really yeah. um the next item on here is media requests And if I'm not mistaken, that grew out of a, an email. That somebody, yeah, that came to me. That, okay. And this was from the Polish uh, Genealogical Society? Correct, yeah. yeah. Um, 
I mean, his regret, he was the um, news uh, newsletter editor. And he wanted to know if, as part of the 350, if, the, if there were any events that would involve um, Polish immigrants. And um, so Kelly sent it on to me. And this is the kind of situation where I'm, I'm glad to give him whatever information he needs, but it's easier if I understand what he wants to put in the newsletter. And I could just tailor something for that rather than send him something and be inappropriate. So um, I sent him back an email telling him that basically and saying, you know, please call me, please get in touch. I just want to uh, have a sense of what, what your needs are uh, and then I'll send you something. But that triggered a whole something else. I mean, there are some of these responses that I think. I'm probably in a good position to answer. Others, I'm gonna have no information at all. And how are we going to, as this moves along, keep tabs on all of this stuff, particularly if we get our email set up <laughs> on the 350th webpage. I mean, it is just, the, the almost needs to be a, a subcommittee and maybe this is somebody else we look for. <laughs> Who is just a coordinator who can who can you know receive the the emails decide who would be an appropriate responder um, you know set up a schedule to do it or whatever or if it's simply uh, you know what are your what's your event schedule they can refer them to the you know to the web page the calendar and they can you know go from there but I, I think it's getting to the point where and, and it's really going to get to the point, I think, next year of trying to get that flow of information requests handled in a friendly and, and but relatively expedited manner. Yep. Yeah, no. Do you have a particular idea or? Well, we, I think we need a. a, a PIO, <laughs> public information officer, <laughs> but we could have a committee. Um, I'm trying to think of who would be interested to do that. But that, because you, like you're, you are correct, that is a full time job. Mm -hmm. uh, Media relations, yeah. Yep. I can try, but I'm not computer adept, totally but I can try being a contact person. I don't mind that, you know. I think the main thing is, Diane, not to lose lose people when they reach out to us. So- oh, True, true, yeah. I think- You wanna keep them uh, involved, keep them interested. If, if, you're, if you're willing to be a point person with your phone number and people email you so that they can check you can respond at least respond yeah yeah i don't um, mind with that type of thing maybe, no. maybe kelly can help you with some of the computer stuff but i don't envision it might be good to have some boilerplate language so you know most of the general asks will be just what's going on what is involved yeah. and then she can just forward that along um and then for the more specific asks whether it's like the recorder or any of the media you know then we can talk about who should be in front of the camera or, or things like that yeah, but yeah. Yeah, yeah i think it's more of just somebody for them to talk to you can solicit what questions they bounce need off of yeah as a first contact and the, mm -hmm. I, I don't care i don't mind you know there, there does seem to be like you said a media person spokesperson there's got to be yeah something instead of instead of contact this 350.org address and because mm -hmm. yeah. we could put it on the website you know for media related questions please contact you know so and so so they have a name if you which want. which we couldn't yeah that would come in handy versus just you know a defunct call, yeah. gmail address that apparently we can't get access to <laughs> but um yeah uh, I, I'd be happy to assist with that. You know, we, I did that in marketing at Cooley. I wasn't the, the spokesperson, so to speak. I'm not very good in front of the camera, but uh, I did the back end stuff, coordinating some of the interviews and things like that. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, Kelly, yeah. Kelly, if you and Diane could just make sure that we don't drop anybody for interest. It, 
we could be, it could be as simple as someone being interested in volunteering or somebody that wants to put something in the newsletters. Mm -hmm. That would be perfect. Thank you. Peter, did, did you actually talk to him? Do you know how he got my email? No, I, I, I've, um, he did try to call me on the weekend and I called him back, but I haven't heard okay. since. Yeah, I was just curious. Oh. I, it came out of um, nowhere. I don't know how actually, I got my Actually, I was one and my 101-year-old Uncle Stanley Phil, who belongs to that society, was visiting two weeks ago. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if that's how it circled back. I'm not sure. But that's the first thing when I read that. And it was like, is Uncle Stanley involved in this one? <laughs> no, I'm glad he got to me versus the Gmail account. So it yeah, worked no. out well. But Excellent. Yeah, actually. But the other thing, too, is it may have been... Uh... Jeannie Soika at PVMA, who's really into uh, Polish okay. genealogies. All righty. And she knows, well, you know, she's been aware of what we've been up to in the oral history program and stuff like that. I mean, it's a perfect question. Uh, and but we've also been talking about how this this 350th is, is more focused on immigrant right. story versus, yeah. you know, the colonial early history. Well, the other thing I wanted to offer this guy, and I'm, I'm, I want to feel him out a little bit before I do it, but I've got a huge data bank of census data from 1850 to 1910. And there are lots of Polish families in that database. So if, if he were... I mean, if they had a, an archive and people were doing serious research, you can't find this data anywhere else. So, you know, to start maybe sharing some information with him, then maybe we'd get some turnaround sharing coming back the other way. Anyway, that, that's another reason I wanted to talk. But okay. I think this is wonderful. Um, okay. Uh, Need to select a new October meeting date? Uh, yeah, I heard from Jen when I tried to get the Zoom links that the 24th, there's a meeting. Oh yeah, that's our town meeting. Yeah, so we can't have that one. And I know we didn't want to do the 31st because it was Halloween. I mean, I think I wouldn't be there, but I don't know if I matter. You guys could certainly do it the 31st. <laughs> um, somebody got a calendar that can look, I mean, just... We could we could do the seventeenth the week before. Yeah, we could do the seventeenth. Yeah, I could do that. Okay, seventeenth looks good. Okay. Okay, so we have um a, a September twenty sixth and October seventeenth. Correct. Yep. Okay. Let me just double check my schedule. Holly, while, while Peter's doing that, I forgot one of your agenda items. <laughs> I, I just realized. Oh, what did what did I ask? It was about the Jubilee language. Oh, okay. So we, well, just we, we can don't bring forget it, it. Yeah, we can bring it up under other. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. What was the date? Seventeenth. Yeah, yeah, October seventeenth. Correct. Good. It's I'm probably, good too. So. Yeah, it's probably good to do the a little bit earlier in October anyway, in case we need, you know, we're getting close. <laughs> I think we've moved up the November one anyway, so it kind of works out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh no, maybe that was December. That was December. It, yeah, it's December, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let me get back to this. Where did everybody disappear? Oh, there you are. Okay, sorry. Um, pictorial postmark. Carolyn wanted this one. I think it was just to see if we've gotten any. I don't know if we have. 
They're supposed to go to the town hall under Deerfield 350th. Who would who would have that? Who would get that? Hmm. I don't know. I'll have to make a note to find out tomorrow. <laughs> I did post it on Facebook. Um, now that it's getting closer to the school season, could certainly put it back out in the schools again because there's plenty of time. They start tomorrow, at least the elementary yeah, school, I think. Okay. So. Yeah, school does start tomorrow. When did we say the end date is on that, Kelly? Do you remember? Gosh, I think it's it's late September or October. Let's see if I can find it. it. I think it's posted on um, the web page or on, fa on Facebook. Yeah, I I have it here. Um, oh, actually, so winter is selected by October fourteenth. It's actually September sixteenth. So it's not as far as I thought. Oh, gosh, we should probably extend that. 16th is. Really well, let's see if we've got replies. Yeah. I mean, we, could, we do have some. Yeah. I'm going to tell my child to do it. <laughs> so you at least have one, right? <laughs> I was going to say, I better get all my grandkids, beat up my grandkids. <laughs> Everybody better get, a, get out there. Any kid that they know, they better be done. Oh, my just God. get a tub of ice cream and just the white kids in the neighborhood over there. If you uh, give us a postmark, I'll, I'll give you a great big ice cream. Do it I plan to, yeah, I plan to do another push with the principal's newsletter and ask, uh, I think his name's Kevin from Frontier to post it again. Um, and then we'll just see, see what happens. Yeah. Kevin okay. Murphy? Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 Um, proposed 350th website updates. It's getting kind of late. I don't know. I was... I just had some thoughts about the website after I kind of went through it. But one thing I found that was major is we're not searchable. If you type in Deerfield 350th in Google, we don't pop up at all. Um, okay. yes. So I'm trying to fix that currently. But I wondered if I had to clear certain things I wanted to do on the website. So for example, there was a huge gap on the main page, which I didn't understand. So I could resolve that by putting on current events or something where we could put the image of the postmark contest and things as they roll in. It's kind of like a instant news feed kind of situation, which I could update on rotation. And then um, I don't know if anyone's seen it, but I did put a calendar up where events can be posted and you can flash back and see the archived events or you can fast forward and see what's available. I just need more information on the events, which we don't have yet. Um, and then I was thinking of just, uh, actually, I think that was about it. And I was going to eventually talk to Marie Peter. We've just not been able to touch base about adding more about the working group or some history stuff. I mean, there's, there's lots of opportunities, I think. I mean, ranging from putting up a poster or, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. just something, something to keep it active. Yeah. I mean, the big thing is making it searchable, which it's not right now. You can't find it. Um, so that's my first goal. I'm working with Google on that now. Uh, and then after that, it's just kind of just making it make sense. Oh, that was it. So the celebrate, it doesn't make any sense to me that you, you have to click on celebrate and that leads you to the calendar. That's not immediately clear to me. I don't know about you. I'd like to have a tab under it that says current events or events. So then it's clear that you'll go there a calendar of events versus celebrate because it's not yeah. clear. Yep. Do, do what you need to do, Kelly. All right. You're going to make it look a lot better and a lot easier to, yeah, go right ahead. Go right ahead. It's, it seemed a little rigid. So yeah. Yeah. I might... like the idea of another tab to get right to events. Yeah. I think that... that's important. Thank you. Mm hmm Yeah, it's actually the usable finding it. Um, I couldn't find it for about three or four weeks because yeah. <laughs> what did I need to do the dot org? I didn't do the dot org yeah. there. And I had to keep going to other places going, I need to see it in print because I need to do. You should be able to just Google search Deerfield 350th and it, it, and wasn't, it should pop up yeah. and it doesn't pop up. Yeah. It doesn't because it's not verified by Google. Alex, is yeah. this something that you can look into? Um, can you look into how that we can get that 
sorted out? I'm working on it. I think I might have oh. it resolved. You just have to have Google verify it and they have to acknowledge that it's a real website. Okay. All right. Yeah, I can, if you need a help, need a hand, Kelly, let me know. Um, okay, I will. I can do it or Excellent. I can help you with it. Yes. Just a, a thought. One of, one of the things that uh, there's, there's a couple people out there in, in town that post old photographs of Deerfield on the Deerfield Now webpage. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to a lot of people walking by and stuff like that. This is very popular. But I could, we could also do something like that on the 350th. We could, like she has a, a, when Jen created it on the main page, the rotating photos. You can just, we could just add to that, make it more robust. Yeah. Yeah. We'll put, we'll put the really photo, cool. maybe put a one paragraph text next to it explaining mm -hmm. a little bit more. I mean, we could talk about Mill Village and I could, you know, whatever. Yeah, I think you can probably be able to click on the photo. It would make the photo bigger, and then we could have the paragraph of information under it. Yeah. So, what I, I yesterday was really hectic, but a lot of fun. One a woman showed up on my doorstep, who I didn't remember I even met her, but I did six months ago. Anyway, her mother lived down the street, and the woman has now moved into her mother's house, and she's cleaning it out, and she's got old photographs, but she's also got uh, programs for Deerfield pageants in 1911, wow. and she's got wow. programs from theater productions in South Deerfield in 1914 that her great-grandfather was in, so she's got pictures oh, cool. of her great-grandfather, and her mother used to teach piano, so she's well, I may even have some sheet music from some of these plays. I'll spend some time looking. And apparently in 1911, in South Deerfield, they uh, developed a um, business association. And it actually became a formal committee. And she has the meeting log. Wow. That lists oh, all, all the who who were members of this thing, who did what. Here's all the subcommittees. Uh, I haven't had a chance to go through much of it, but you know, it's just one of those things that this is a unique document. And I'm thinking, you know, I just what I did is I came home with a bunch of photographs, and I'm going to scan them in high resolution and um, give her back the originals and probably a copy. And I'll put a copy up at PVMA, but I don't see any reason. I think she'd be perfectly amenable to having her pro her photographs put on the web page. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some in the, there's some pictures in there that she's got. You, you froze, Pete. Number of pictures, but I've 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 seen a lot of photographs of Elm Street after the gas works blew up, which left the south side of Elm Street in a total wreck. There wasn't a building left standing. Wow, that's amazing. I actually found a photograph in her collection of the gas works before Orkington walked into it with a lighted lamp one night to check on a gas smell, which hmm. what triggered the explosion. So, I, you know, cool story is anybody know what this building is well anybody know where this was after the building blew up <laughs> you know, i mean you could you could do all sorts of little things like that yeah i i think that's a fantastic idea and i think people are truly interested especially uh, yeah. uh, we're, we're trying to do more stuff for downtown anyway yeah. um you know well, one of the things i was thinking about is also like the memorabilia from the theaters and stuff. There's those glass cases that is down in the office and, and John said I could use them anytime or we could use them anytime. Absolutely. We could we could set up a display of theater in South Berl in South Deerfield in 1915 and actually have photographs of the actors, uh, some of the plays that they were putting on, um, put them up in the in the cases. 
And the woman, very, um, very fortunately, is really into history. She's done her own whole family genealogy, which is a family of Smead, which is the Smead family, which goes back to the early days of Deerfield. They were as never prominent as Reverend Williams and a few of the other characters that show up in uh, George Sheldon's records, but they were, they've been a family right on through. And, well, uh, she's a potential, she's also would be a potential volunteer. If she's really well, I, that had crossed my mind, Carolyn. Don't let um, <laughs> the uh, the problem bring her is in, she, Peter, bring her she's in. working two jobs right now, and, and as she says, I have a heavy mortgage. Which is, but I did persuade her not to sell off all the stuff I just told you about. <laughs> until I, until She's I get the papers. <laughs> so anyway, um, it was just one of those pleasant days where I had no clue whatsoever what was going to happen, and he just came along, and it was great. Uh, okay. Uh, the last, th the last thing the on here was the email from Erica. Right. Jacob, did, did, I, have, I, have you, you all had a chance to read it? Mm -hmm. okay. So I, I think someone needs to get back to her. I mean, obviously she's looking for where she might fit to help with our celebration, but I'm seeing threads of the history working group here. Um, and obviously wanting representation of, um, you know, the indigenous people. Um, so I just wanted to make sure it didn't get buried and we had somebody get back with her. No, I mean, and, and I'm perfectly willing to, to get back to her on here. I mean, for one thing, I think she's unaware that there are a number of things going on or have already gone on that um, already indicate that this is being done. Mm -hmm. And so maybe that's a good thing. But the other part of it is, you know, I want to learn all this stuff. Well, the steering committee, I don't think the steering committee, that's their responsibility. I mean, if she wants education, she should get in touch with the groups that can educate her. I mean, we, our job as I see it, and I think the way we set it up is that the steering committee is to coordinate the overall functioning and not do the individual projects. Now we've we've all sort of taken a stab, each of us, into doing into specific individual projects, but that's something separate. And I don't think we can start taking on what somebody wants to do. I I, my, my, I think part of my response and, and I'll just throw it out there is basically to say what the steering committee's job is, what our goals were set with being all inclusive. These are some of the things that are already being done, but if you want to um, pursue some of your goals and work with people to do that and come up with a project that you could then bring to the steering committee and you know, yeah. say, okay, uh, you know, we're, that sounds great to us. Um, I think that's I a great know, idea. I don't think we can take on any more than we're already doing. Yep. Um, there's just one thing I wanted to bring up. Uh, Joe Cumberford had uh, reached out to me about the Deerfield 1735 peace treaty. And of course, I really didn't know anything about it. So I reached out to Peter. Peter gave me some information and uh, sent. I sent it back to Joe Cumberford. And um, just an outline and because um, there's some interest again some interest from Native American group and but uh, basically they wonder what's, where it what's was. his position Carolyn do you know I mean where, where is uh, he? I don't know I don't know so I, I I'm not sure what I mean if we if we do something with Native Americans we got to make sure we include all the different groups so right I'm, I'm not really sure what it was, it was more like, do you know where the, the 1735 oh, event occurred? Event occurred and uh, that, yeah. And, and so it was in Old Deerfield, right? Yeah, yeah. Like at the Old Town Hall or? Well, no, see at that point, Old Deerfield is the only thing in Deerfield. 
Right. Nobody's outside the village. So they had the, the, uh, I mean, people, there were, there's no building there that, that was in, right? It was no, probably just it was held as far as I remember any detail. It was held outside. Right. There were 80 Native Americans and the governor of Massachusetts Bay Colony and his contingent and local settlers. Uh, but 1735, which is when this happened, Deerfield is the northernmost military outpost in Massachusetts, which is why it occurred there. And it remained that way for the next 20 or 30 years. I mean, if we were involved in a war with Canada and the Indians, Deerfield was the staging point. And it was the northernmost settlement. Um, Northfield, uh, had been abandoned again. Um, so that was it, and that's why it occurred. And what it was, was a treaty with the Iroquois, not with local Indians. Because by that point, all of the Valley Indians were living in New York, in Scattercook or whatever, but they were under the supervision of the Iroquois League. And the Iroquois dealt with the English governors, the governor of New York at that, at that point, but there were um, forts in Massachusetts that the Iroquois could go to to acquire supplies. And so that's how it sort of came about. So Fort Dummer, which was now in present Brattleboro, Vermont, they didn't straighten out the state borders for a long time, but that was one of the points of defense. And then there was Fort Number Four up in Charlemont, and the Fort Massachusetts out in the Berkshires, and Fort Shirley up in the hill towns. So we had a line of the English had a line of fortifications that went across from New York all the way up the Connecticut River. There was the Conneville so, Fort too. There was what? The Conneville Forts in Burniston. Yeah. Well, there was a, there were there were a lot of, of um, house fortifications. Yeah, Holly. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I love this discussion, but I'm looking at my clock and I, okay. I just had one more quick thing. So can can we finish up oh, and no, then anybody who wants to hang I, on? I, I just, it was one more thing that potentially we would be doing. Uh, I don't know, but well, I just- if you need this. more information, I can try and look some up, Carolyn. Um, yeah, well, I'm not really sure. I just wanted to caution everybody that if we if we started down that line line of doing something, we needed to be inclusive of whoever, everybody. You know, I just didn't want us to celebrate something or do something that would end up being offensive <laughs> or incorrect or whatever. Go that ahead. Screen here. <laughs> okay. Can I move forward? Yes. Yeah. Um, one thing that Kelly just mentioned, um, I wanted to talk about, and um, it's number one, we don't have a Friends of Deerfield person here, which would be really helpful, um, but they posted a save the date for December 31st. Their verbiage is, this is an informal black and white attire event. I'm really concerned about that, making it informal and not just a celebratory event. Because we, we talked about this and we changed the name based on the request. And now this word informal is not what we intended. Well, I think if we get Chris here next uh, at our next meeting, we can... Uh, reach out and try to solve this because I think Stan was concerned that we were making it too formal. Or I we, know that. Or we were concerned that he was making it too formal. So, what's uh, an informal black and white though? I, I, 
I assume if it's a black and white event, that's a tie and coat and tie. So I, I'm, that's why I'm, it, it seems uh, an inconsistency in terminology. I, I can't figure out well, it's contradictory. what they're really asking for. Yeah, you're, you're contra contradictory on what your description is there. So we'll, we'll, we need to sort it out. Well, and the other thing is, I mean, they're putting out a save the date and obviously it's their fundraiser, but I thought there was some request early on that anything would be run by this committee. And so the fact that it went out with that verbiage, it just, it, con it concerned me. Um, so I, I do think we need to get that sorted out. And, and the last trivia question I have is, I've heard from a couple of people that they've heard radio advertisements asking for volunteers for the parade for our celebration year. I've never heard them, but several people, have, not several, a few people have told me they've heard them. I'd like to know who would have done that and how a, an advertisement would have gotten out there. Because... I'm not aware of it. Hmm. I don't know either. Who's did you did they say who the contact person would be? No, they said they heard it on what was it the radio? Yeah, I can only been, yeah, suspect WHAI, but it could have come off of our select board meeting saying that we needed volunteers for uh, the 350 and in particularly the parade committee because that was oh okay so it might have just been a snapshot of your verbiage at that. okay that that like, may make more sense because I kept saying who's doing an advertisement and no it could have just been a public announcement they have oh, okay. they required they are required to do a certain number of public announcements okay so that up. makes more sense. They pick up little tidbits from different. Okay, know, that, that definitely makes more sense. It Thank just you. some. Uh, uh, it would be great if they had contact information. <laughs> you want them to do it; it'll be effective. <laughs> yeah, we'd like you to help, but we don't know who you should call. Yeah. Oh dear. Hey, okay, motion to adjourn, folks. Uh, I'll make that motion, Carolyn. I'll second it, Holly. All those in favor? Hi, Holly. Hi, Peter. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Kelly. Diane, you got to. Diane, gotta... I'm unmuted now. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. 807, we're out, guys.